seen all these megalithic structures around the planet? Now, instead of looking this as a circle, just think it as an infinite point of, uh, of uh, without uh, spatial volume. And if we look at it this way, we're, evil, we're more easily able to understand that. We think of this as an indivisible line that actually has no extension. We're talking about unmanifest inertia, or what uh, quantum uh, mechanics and general relativity and their insanity have called dark matter or quantum fluid, which is just nothing other than a euphemism for what Tesla, Heaviside, Steinmetz, Faraday, and all the greats of electrical theory that gave us 100 percent of our current electrical grid and system. Einstein gave us nothing of that. Nothing. Okay? He invented nothing. He discovered nothing. And uh, his quote-unquote theory of relativity is mostly stolen from Henry Hunley Poincaré. Now, as you've seen underneath the ferrule cell, a magnet, doesn't matter what shape it is, looks exactly like this. It looks like a, a torus. I'll show it to you in a slightly uncompressed fashion. There you go. You actually see a torus, a toroid a spirograph, a hypertrochoid. That's the expression of the loss of inertia. Now, as Faraday called magnetism, he called it the dielectric field. But what does that mean specifically? It means that the necessitated loss of inertia, i.e. the ether, must be expressed as the creation of space, and of course the posterior attribute of the creation of space is a measure of movements of magnitude, which we call time, but of course time does not exist. Time is a human contrivance. Now here we have electricity, which, by the way, is five times the IQ and Planck electrification. Electricity is nothing other than the hybrid of electricity and magnetism operating together, which is found in, obviously, frequency and amplitude, constantly pulsing back and forth like this. Well, what frequency? What amplitude? Obviously, we have the entire EM spectrum and we have electricity. So electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and of magnetism, operating at a frequency and an amplitude. So electricity terminates not into magnetism, as wrongly thought, but as magnetism by losing its dielectric component. In other words, all that electricity that is actually brought through electromagnet to lift up dead cars so they could be scrapped is nothing other than the loss of the dielectric component of electricity, which means you have an extremely high Gauss field that is able to pick up multi multi-ton uh, cars with that electromagnet. It is that electricity terminates as magnetism by losing its dielectric component, not into magnetism, but as magnetism, because electricity is the hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. Phi times psi equals Q, Planck, and electrification. Electricity, by definition, denotatively, is a combination of two things, dielectricity and magnetism. So by losing its dielectric component, the electricity manifests itself in the electromagnet, for example, as a huge, enormous, very powerful, high Gauss magnetic field. Gravity, like electricity, is nothing other than a hybrid. So what is gravity? Well, we talk about what denotes gravity. We're talking about mass i.e. matter. Matter is nothing more than a dielectric condensate. Okay? It's like taking carbon dioxide and freezing it to its solid state. Okay? Gravity is nothing other than dielectricity. Gravity is no different than turning on your TV set and actually shining a light off from the side and seeing the little dust particles actually head to the TV set and stick to the TV set. That's why you're fronting your TV set, especially the little CRT tubes, got so dusty. The dust in the air would go gravitate to the front of the... That is the exact same thing as gravity. People think that that is an electrostatic charge, or like you charge a balloon up and you pull someone's hair to it. That same acceleration, not force, that same acceleration is what we ignorantly call gravity. Gravity itself is an autonomous acceleration, of which a lot of people call it in incorrectly a force, does not exist. It's like, what do you mean gravity doesn't exist? Obviously, I can drop this and there's gravity. What is gravity? I have no idea. Okay, next question. Gravity. What I mean specifically is that gravity does not exist. It is not an autonomous force. It's definitely not a force, which, of course, even the idiots of general relativity and quantum mechanics will admit to. They call it an acceleration. But an acceleration of what? By what? We need explanations, not descriptions. And all that general relativity and quantum mechanics provides are descriptions, not explanations. It is a dielectric acceleration. It's dielectric avoidance. Okay, it is the loss of force in motion. 100% of the visible universe is this. 
is magnetism. Okay, the entire atomic structure of an atom in picometers, as it measured in picometers, is due to magnetism. So dielectricity, electrostatics, electricity, magnetism, and quote-unquote gravity are one thing only. It's our only pathetic human understanding of the nature of the universe that we think these are four separate things. Really, they're just one thing. Uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. Here we have a standard CRT tube with a grid with a spiral projected onto it, which is being taken off of an old camcorder that's pointing at a wall with a grid on it with a, you can see, a clockwise spiral. So I have this camera, old camera, hooked into an old television set, taking a look at a clockwise spiral. Now let's take an enormous 2 inch by 1 inch N45 neodymium iron boron magnet and let's show you centripetal and centrifugal vortex movements as we approach the CRT tube. Here we go with a magnet. Now, let's discuss this in a second, but first, let's look at what's at the center here. Can you see what's at the center? You see those scintillating hairs that are moving off in a clockwise direction? Okay, now let's flip the magnet the other direction, and let's see what sort of spot we get on our CRT tube this way. Oh, surprise, surprise, look. We're getting counterclockwise movement. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. There we go. Take a look at that. Now, how do I know which polarity I have pointed